I'm Nathan Judah. I'm here with Wolves reporter Tim Spears on the back of a stunning 2-0 victory for Wolves at Stoke. Tim, that, that was as good as it gets. Oh, what, what, what an away day. Well, that was, you know, that was up there with the Newcastle game, but even better, really, uh, considering the opposition that Wolves played today. I mean, we're expecting plenty of changes from both from both teams, but the fact that Stoke only made four changes, when yep. that was a Premier League team. That was, that, yeah, that they've been out, doing well. Uh, 100% a Premier League, you know, good Premier League team with players who used to play for Bayern Munich, yep. for Benfica, for Inter Milan, Eight for Porto. Um, like they played the number, play the number one goalkeeper as well in the league run. So it's, it was... <laughs> Compared to Wolves, who made a lot of changes. Wolves, who made six changes, brought in... Lee Evans hasn't played since August, and Mike Williamson who hasn't played since November 2015. <laughs> yeah. And and two 0 didn't, didn't flatter them. I, you not, know, I, I know, the I know Stoke had that ten minute spell second half, but you know Wolves had great chances, including the injury time at the end where they could could have had could have had two or three more to be honest. So it certainly didn't flatter them. Well, it's not as if they got any forewarning as well down that right hand side. John Daddy Budvars and two great chances at the start. So they, they knew they were up against it. Yeah, that was it. They came flying out of traps. A couple of great uh, great chances on the counter attack. Budvars I think it was two two shots in eight minutes. Wolves press office there. Hello, buddy. Hello, Wolves press office. Uh, yeah, two two chances in the first eight minutes. First, well, the first half was all Wolves. Carl Keeman didn't have a single save to make in that no. first half. Well, uh, Stoke only had one chance to repeat a crouch. You know, they deservedly took the lead. Lovely goal from Helder Costa, that man again, yeah. his eighth of the season. And the game plan really worked. I thought the back, back four were, to a man, absolutely superb. Phenomenal. You know, marshalled by Mike Williamson. You know, what what guy? Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't, he hasn't yeah. played for 14 months. So many people have written him up. And, and you know, even myself, I thought, you know, is this guy going to play, play for Wolves at all? He's out contract at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. He hasn't played since they signed him permanently. Yeah. And he comes in, having played 45 minutes at Telford, where you know he looked a bit leggy. Let's be honest. Yeah. And, he's, and he's, he was a bit dominated. He was pretty, uh, probably the best player on the pitch. And um, you know, not just the way that he played, but the way he made other people play. Well, look, Courtney Horse. He was doing. He was doing this mm -hmm. more than Paul Lambert. Well, uh, it was just like he was doing semaphore. Yeah. And, you know. Constantly, constantly positioning the central defenders, constantly talking to Courtney Horse. They're in, they're in constant dialogue throughout the game, and it's no coincidence that Horse is absolutely superb as well. That, but that's amazing that he could, that, that Horse can change so much after after being, you know, kicked out of the side. Yeah. Woeful, really. With, you know, with, with Danny yeah, Barnes and stuff like that. Making a lot of mistakes. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he's played well himself today, Courtney Horse. It's not just Mike Williamson, but no, at no, the same absolutely. time. That's fantastic, really, look going forward. We saw the same in the five games he played last season on loan, where he really made a difference to Danny Bart's game as well, and the pair of them looked great as a centre mm -hmm. partnership. We saw Roy Orford playing well today. Doherty, some of the some of the blocks that Doherty and Hawes in particular were making in the second half, yeah. and some that Williamson made as well, were just a absolutely brilliant. It's the kind of defending that they all enjoy. They're not having to think too much about it. There's a lot of blocks and tackles and interceptions which they all rebelled in, but they were you know, to, to a man was superb and the defence have come in for a lot of stick recently sure that's three clean sheets on, on the bounce now away mm -hmm. from home so you can really see and they're playing some great attacking stuff as well yeah. there's so many positives it was it was but, really but, enjoyable to watch but you know last few weeks there's been so many positives Lambert's really really got them sorted and um, I think it's going to be a really good second half of the season of, of course Helder Costa was if there was anyone who was going to score it was him and you know yeah. 4,600 fans just went crazy weren't they I mean, they were amazing oh, so, I mean some of that you know <sighs> unbelievable We'd have had fun in there today. We were, we were. Yeah. There were some great scenes that, in that second half, but they outsang, you know, Stoke for the whole game. You could see it coming because, you know, it wasn't a full house here by any means. Wolves, Wolves, uh, a quarter of the attendance was Wolves fans. Mm -hmm. So, it's obviously Stoke were never going to be as up for it as Wolves were, but they capitalised they capitalised on that. And like I said, they played better than them. And the home fans are getting frustrated quite early on. Yeah. So, they enacted the game plan, you know, to, to a T, to be honest. They were going to come under some, some kind of pressure as well, though, weren't they? Yeah. So in, this, in the second half, but Carla Keeney, some, some cracking saves. Yeah, Stoke were, Stoke were dreadful in the first half. Yeah. No, no bones about that. Yes, Wolves stopped the playing, but they were dreadful. They brought on Charlie Adam and Joe Allen at mm -hmm. half time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think it was from minute 60. To 72, the yeah. team is pulled off. You sure. know, four worldies. Yeah, top draw. Like, like really, really top draw. Yeah. And kept and kept us in the game because yeah, at that point, you know, they, they could have easily conceded two, two quick goals. But you're going to get that with, with, with Of the... course, you're going to get that. Look how much money Stoke spent on this yeah. team. The Wolves to come and outplay them. It's such a magnificent feat. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the middle of, in the middle of all this, right, you've got some some teenager who's born <laughs> in the year yeah. 2000, who comes on Wolves' his first sub. No, it wasn't a, to wasn't a token appearance. No, no, no. It's come on for Joe Mason. He's made time. his debut, and he hasn't looked out of place against, no. against bloody Shakiri and the rest of it. Um, he was great. He looked composed. He got straight on the ball and looked to take players on. I thought he was. I thought he was brilliant. Morgan Gibbs White, one for the future. He's, you know, 
who speaks to people at the academy and around the club for the past year, he's the one yeah. that they've rates higher than anybody. And we've seen Conor Ronan and Bright come in, we've seen Niall Ennis come in in pre-season, there are more to come, and he's the highest rated of the lot, to be honest. He can play anywhere. He played on left midfield today and he did really well. Well, well done to him. Heldacosta scored that end, but it would be great, perfect, to all these, these, these travelling fans to see a goal at, you know, at this end, and bang, Matt Doherty. With a free kick. <laughs> With a free kick. Of course he was going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, great hit as well. But he, he had a cracking game. I mean, a lot of them did. But I thought he was he was brilliant as well. Some of the blocks, some of the blocks and interceptions he made as well. But yeah, he got forward well. He had, he had another shot as well when he got forward. Played a one-two. When he's on his game, he's one of the best left backs in the championship, and, that, and that's what I consider him to be now. A left back. He's played there for a year. He's been Wolves' best player in 2016 for me. And um, yeah, great, great goal, great do, goal. Do you know this Wolves team? They've got some decent players in this squad, you it's know. Like, all right, aren't they? Yeah. But I mean, it's, I thought, what's going on they're with this season? Enigma, they're, they're it's just mental. It's yeah. mental. You've got a little feather there, haven't you? I'm oh, sorry. Uh, they're, it they're, is crazy, though, isn't it? It is crazy, but it just needed someone to bring it all together, and that's what Lambert's doing. He's a clever guy, he's a shrewd guy, but he's making brave decisions. I mean, the three kids he's brought in, four mm -hmm. kids he's played in, he's brought in now. You know, he's the likes of Prince Onyego, who just didn't even get on the bench today. Yeah. Jack Texera didn't even get on the bench today. He's just saying, look, that's you know, quite telling, isn't it? You'd have thought you're not for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's he's decided what his team is. He's been ruthless. He's been bold. He's been brave. And I really like the way he's got the team set up. Four three, four two three one. I think suits them really well. Bright had another good game today. They look great on the counter attack. You've got to say, every time they're really stressed to play. Uh, with this intensity and this high pressing, and it's really, it's really working for Wolves, and the players have all really bought, bought into it. Who'd Great team spirit. Who do well. you want next round? Well, I was going to say the Baggins, but they lost. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Uh, well, Starbridge lost, did they? Starbridge lost the late goal, yeah. We'll take Chelsea away for the buffet. Yeah, for the for the food, fantastic. Uh, well, and, and I, I just asked, I just asked Lambert who he wanted, and he said a Premier League team. Really? So, so you, you 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 want you want rubbish at home? No, I don't. No, because. Um, but you know what? You can see the league season petering out. I, I do think they'll have a good second half of the season, but, yeah. I, I, but they've got too much to do for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I think it's 14 points. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So come March, you know, when the season's over, probably, you'd love to say they're still in the cup, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. in, Absolutely, in, like, yeah. the quarterfinals. Yeah, yeah, like, that'd be cheeky, great. Cheeky sixth round, yeah. Cheeky sixth round. Just, just to keep the season going, yeah. keep it alive. You know, Wolves fans love the FA Cup. They're going to take some wherever they go, aren't they? Where, gonna... Wherever they go, they will take some fans. Uh, so, yeah. It'd be great to get a Premier League team at home and see, see what Chelsea and Man City, but you know, they'll probably lose that. So, uh, as long as they win, who cares? Let's go on a bit of a cup run. Absolutely. Let's go to Wembley. Let's, let's go to Wembley. Let's go to Wembley in the playoffs. And the checker trade. And the checker trade. Wow. Well, three Wembley A Wembley treble. We've got some company here. Yeah. Who are these guys? Uh, I think it's one of the players. But not oh, right. Okay. But he's lost. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, I think it is. Let's probably wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is Stoke nil. Wolves to win the fifth, fourth round of the FA Cup. Monday night is the draw. Happy days. Have a good one. Bye bye.